Howdy, April Precal. It's Ms. Kosh. We have started by graphing by hand. We, did, we graphed three by hand. I'm going to pause on graphing by hand um, and jump down to... Where do I want to go? Well, notice this very first thing that we graphed was a circle. So maybe we'll talk, we'll talk circles um, right here, and then we will talk... Um, we, I haven't graphed by hand with the roses yet. Um, and then we did start some of this down here. So let me come to, um, I think I have the two Desmos things I created. Um, let's do circles first. So if we look at circles, notice a circle can be centered at the origin if we just say r is equal to whatever. Okay, so if I have a radius, if I just say r equals, oh, I don't know, 8.4, then it's just going to give me an, a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 8.4. Um, okay, so we can come back to this circle. A circle centered at the origin, okay, what would that sketch look like? Well, you would just, you know what, I should have probably said centered at the pole. Um, and the general equation is r is equal to some value a. Okay, um, and then the, the radius, so basically it's just a circle centered at the radius, or circle centered at the pole where the, um, the radius, so like if I have, if I say like r equals 4 has a radius of 4. I don't know. Anyway, I'm, I don't need any notes there. That's fine. Okay, the circle that passes through the pole sits above the x-axis. Okay, let's come back to Desmos for a second. So this one we've, we're going to turn off. When I look at this one, let's make this a value a little bit bigger. Notice I have um, an, a value of um, an a value of 8. So that I am graphing currently r equals 8 sine theta. And I am, I am passing through the pole there at the center, and I am sitting on top of the x-axis. Is that what they just asked me? A circle that passes through the pole sits above the x-axis. Okay, so what did we look like? We looked something like, okay, pretend I can draw a circle. And this general form would be r is equal to a, I think that was just sine theta, yes, sine of theta. Um, and the a is actually the, the diameter of the circle. Okay, so when we look over here, notice my graph includes the point. So notice that that's eight units. That's on the, well, it's eight units above the pole. I don't know how to describe that any better, but there we go. Okay, so what would happen, though, if I made this negative? It still is going to sit on the axis, but now it's going to go below. Okay, so this is, let's see, anything else I need to write here? Um, this is where it sits above when a is greater than zero, and a, the diameter of that circle, is equal to the a value. Okay? Circle that passes through the pole sits below the x-axis. That's what we just saw a second ago. I don't know that I'm drawing those in the correct order that they happen, but um, this is where r equals a sine theta, where a was less than zero. And once again, we have the diameter of... Um, equals a. Okay. A circle that passes through the pole sits to the right of the y-axis. Okay, let's come back to Desmos. Turn this one off. Uh, let's turn this one on. Oh, okay, let's make that so we can see it. Okay, so notice right here, we are sitting to the right of the, uh, the y-axis, and this is going to be um, the cosine var variation. And so we're looking at something like passes through here. I don't think I drew that correctly, to be honest with you. Um, I know that I didn't. This would be something like r equals a or b um, cosine theta. Now think about this for a second. If I plug in 0, so maybe I should say f of theta equals r equals whatever, something like that. So f of 0 means I'm taking cosine of 0. Well, cosine of 0 is equal to 1, so this is going to be equal to a. So actually, the very first point that we should graph is going to be right there. This is going to have, which is why um, it's going to, okay, so it sits to the right when it's positive, um, and it also has a diameter of a, um, and that very first point, this is the point f of 0 equals a right there. Okay, what happens when, coming back here, we make this negative, we sit to the left. 
okay? And everything else is, is still true for this. So a circle that's over here, um, it's gonna be, um, well, and I should have started here because we have, if I have f of theta equals r equals a cosine theta, f of zero means, and if my a is negative, f of zero is still gonna be equal to a, but that means I started to come this way in zero, but then I had to turn around and make it negative, which puts me right there. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so once again, this is this is gonna be where a is less than zero, and our diameter is still equal to a. Okay, that's kind of fun. Um, I think I'll come back and do um, the petals, the rows in, in a little bit. So let's look at this one. So then they wanted us to go to discovering cardioids and labicons which I think I already opened right here. Okay, so this very first one, I have um, I have this graph. When my Notice my A value is equal to 1. When those are the same, um, it opens... Uh, okay, so there's two different things that can happen. We can look at A, we can look at, um, a plus A sine theta or A plus A cosine theta or B, whatever. Okay, as that number gets bigger, it's going to grow. Um, and the cosine one is going to include, that was weird, I don't know what I just did. The cosine one is going to include a point that's on what we would consider the x-axis. Um, what happens when we make it negative? Well, then look at that, it flips over to the other side. Um, same idea over here, whoa. Okay, um, maybe I'll put a link to these Desmos in the um, YouTube channel thing, but what? go away, what am I doing? Okay, so this is, so what happens with a cardioid is um, A over B, where A over B is, well, okay, where A over B is equal to 1. Okay, in other words, A equals B. And what did we find? This one right here is going to be the one with cosine. And this one is going to be the one with sine. And you can think about that. Um, if I look at... Okay, so what did I call cosine? I called it g. g of 0 is going to be equal to um, a, well, so a and b were equal, so it's it's going to be equal to a plus a cosine 0. Well, cosine of 0 is equal to 1, so this is actually going to be equal to 2a, this, this point right out here. So that's that first point, and that's how we know that this is the, the cosine cardioid shape. The sine cardioid shape, if we came over here and said, okay, this is f of pi over 2 would be equal to a plus a sine pi over 2. What is sine of pi over 2? It's equal to 1. So this is going to be equal to 2a right here. So this point is going to be f of um, f of pi over 2 is going to equal 2a. Okay. Now let's see, let's go look at some of these other ones where our A and our B values start changing, okay? And there's a relationship that happens here. So let's see if we can come to Desmos. We'll turn these two off. Those are the cardioids where A and M, where those letters were the same. Um, I don't know why it says save a copy. Just, just stop, <laughs> tell it to go away. Um, okay, the next one. So let's turn this one on. Um, and so now as I change my value, I can get this inner loop that I found in my last in my last drawing. Okay, so let's maybe put this, let's put this at two, and let's put this one at four. Okay, so now notice what I've got here is sine, just like the last one, sine kind of, um, well, we had this one right here is going to be sine because we'd have this point here, like this is, if we say um, f of, uh, what do we have, pi over 2, sorry, f of pi over 2 is going to be equal to um, a plus b sine of pi over 2. Well, pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is 1, so this is going to be equal to a plus b. And so we have this little, this inner loop, and then we have the, 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 um, the outer loop there. Um, okay, and I think what we need to say is that this a over b, the first number, what did we just find a second ago? Um, the first number is smaller than the second number. So, um, so a over b is less 
than one. Okay, so when, when my B value is bigger than my A value, so then I get these two different figures. This one would be cosine. And then what changes, um, what, what causes the reflection? Well, let's come back to Desmos. If I come and I can extend this out, but if I start making things negative, then that's when um, it reflects. I wonder, does it matter if I keep this positive? Somewhere positive and make this negative? Nope. Okay, this can stay positive. If this becomes more and more negative, we get that inner loop. That's kind of cool. Okay, and then what's the difference between that one and um, the cosine graph? Well, the cosine graph, as I make this bigger, it's going to just... They, they, open in, they, they open different ways. They open different directions. Um, so it's kind of fun. That is what we call the um, a limacon with an inner loop. Then we have dimpled limacons. And I think what happens with this one is where um, the A over B is between um, 1 and 2. So and maybe a better way to write this is that 1 is less than a over b which is less than two and so we can get this kind of dimpled shape versus then it becomes convex when it's bigger than two um, and once again this one is cosine because this has that point when i do when i do f of zero i get once again a plus b which is going to be that farthest out value and then this one it's f of or maybe it's, I'm, my apologies um g of zero this was f of not zero just testing you as f of pi over two and that's going to be equal to that a plus b okay um let's look back to see what they mean by convex i lied Con yeah convex okay sorry i didn't lie i don't know what i'm saying okay so when let's turn off one of them when we change this it gets to be this would be that dimpled limacon and so that ratio between the two of them um is between one and two, but when it gets to be too big, then it becomes kind of this dimpled sort of thing. I, no, this is dimpled. This is what they're calling convex. But to be perfectly honest with you, I don't think AP is gonna care a tiny bit about what the um, names are. So we don't really need to worry about that per se. We just need to know kind of roughly, how do I start graphing it? Where am I? Um, and th there's a few more details that we need to talk through, but um, hopefully I haven't confused you royally. Um, whoop, where did it go? I think I've answered most of these questions. We haven't talked rows yet, but maybe I'll graph this um, or some of these and then, um, and then talk through the rows on, um, on Desmos for the next video. Okay, go practice, subscribe, keep watching. Good luck.